Hello everyone, welcome to The Dev Method. My name is Ricky. Today we're gonna to be talking about context menus in iOS. So I have here pulled up the human interface guidelines that will discuss uh, the purpose of context menus on iOS. And uh, context menus, if you're not familiar, um, on a traditional desktop computer would be uh, the equivalent of like a right click. So you get some extra things that you can do with that particular item that you hover your cursor over and then you do the right click and then maybe it says copy, paste, share, uh, any other things that the, the application has custom made uh, to operate on whatever it is you're trying to look at. So with our purposes today, we're gonna be taking a look at trying to recreate something very similar to what we see on the Apple developer website for context menus. I'll have the link in the description. The context menus here, if you take a look, uh, we have quite a few bits of um, things that we can do with them, but the, the, the most basic part of it is actually not necessarily the picture that's there, but the text with the icons below it. So we're gonna be taking a look at recreating that uh, there's a lot to, to look at here. Uh, previously in the past, um, there's been this peek and pop that's available on 3D Touch, but context menus are for iOS 13 or later, so it's a relatively new um, UI control that you can actually use um, on your, uh, in your iOS app. So we're gonna start from scratch. So what I have here in front of me is a very basic uh, view controller. And this particular view controller does absolutely nothing right now. Um, if we were to run and build what we have here, there wouldn't be anything displayed on the screen. Um, in fact, I'm actually gonna get rid of all these things here so that we can just start from uh, the ground up. Uh, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a view that we can actually tap on, uh, and then I'll, I'll set up the gesture recognizer to do that. Um, and then uh, we'll see how that, you know, how that mechanic works, and then we'll, we'll switch over to the context menu to see how something like that can be enhanced. So give me a moment to do that. All right, if I did this correctly, I should be able to see a square on the screen that's 200 by 200, and it's right in the center of our view controller. There we go, we got it, okay. So now let me set up the tap gesture recognizer. All right, so here we are. If I was to tap on this, let's see what happens. All right, it prints out tapped square. So if you want to take that further and you want to give more actions than to just tapping on it, the next thing that we have to do is actually create this context menu. So at this point, I have created a UI context menu. And I have to give it some sort of delegate. And so I add that to the square. See the square takes a UI interaction. So this object here actually implements UI interaction. So I'll do menu interaction, add that there. And then the protocol that self actually has to implement is UI context menu interaction delegate. And the most important one out of here that we get is actually this method here. So I put this down below the mark and it shows the interaction is passed in, the configuration for the menu at the location. So we can test the location of the screen that it's added at um, and then we have here the, uh, you know, we have an optional UI menu configuration that we have to return. So instead of me doing it optionally, I'm gonna actually do it right now. So I'll do UI context. So there's a couple of arguments that are passed in here. I'm gonna separate them on multiple lines so you can see. And just for the purposes of what we're doing now, um, we're, we don't want an identifier, although I would encourage you to do that. So I'm gonna assign it to nil. Um, same thing with the preview 
we don't really need the preview right now, not for our first steps, so I just uh, give that as nil as well. And then the, we have the action provider. So it's a UI context menu action provider. Watch when I press enter, it actually turns into a closure and it passes you in actually these like suggested actions, so these UI menu element. So I'll just do suggested actions and it's expecting us in this closure to return a UI menu. So why don't we go ahead and do that, UI menu. And we have a title, which I'll say, hello menu, so that we know where it comes up. And then the only other thing that we're going to use right here, we're going to take out all these other things like the image and all that, and we're just going to do children. And we're going to go ahead and pass in the suggested actions. Let's run this and see what, we're, what we get. Okay, here's that blue square, click and hold, here we are. <laughs> so here's the title, hello menu, and then we have text style. Notice when I tap on that, nothing happens, the menu kind of disappears and nothing else happens after that. So we're actually not gonna take these suggested actions, okay? So I'm just gonna say, put an underscore there and, and tell Swift that I don't really care what that is, um, and then now that you understand what's being returned, I'll actually take this out too, make this a little bit cleaner for us to read. So it will be a UI menu, and I'll put the return there too. Now we don't have suggested actions, so we'll just have children like this. Let's see what happens if we run it with no children. So notice it's like it moves a little bit, like the, the visual feedback happens, but nothing else on the screen shows up. So we actually have to create our own actions. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, let's call the first one uh, sh oof, copy. So what we have here is we wanna make a uh, UI action and those are the children. So I'll do the first one is copy UI action. Give it a title. And then we have a handler, but we also have some other things that we can do here too, like image and identifier and such. Uh, so right now I'm just going to stick with the very basic, I'll just say copy here. Now the action handler, if you go ahead and press enter on that through the autocomplete, um, you actually get past the action, so that's this action that we're creating right here. And then you have the code that you want to run. So very similar as before, I actually don't care about the action that's passed in because I can see all the action in line here and uh, we're really just going to be printing out copy was selected. So we won't see any actual something going on. Um, now let's do another one, let's do share UI action. And so now I'll do another title And again, I don't want the action. And then I'll say, we'll print out uh, share was selected, okay? And then the order of these children is actually the order that it'll show from top to bottom in the menu. So I want copy first and I want share second. And that should be all I have. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, now click and hold. So there's my title again, but now I have copy and I have share. So what's great about what we have here is that we, instead of having this uh, gesture recognizer with the target action, which is uh, actually grabbing on here to this at obj c, and it, this needs to then be an NS object, uh, then we have this callback, which is on self, which ended up being the target. And then it just, you know, tap the square. We now have this context menu, so it's not just a tap interaction, just one action. We have actually multiple actions that we're asking the user which one uh, they want to use. So with what we have here, we just have some very basic text that's there. And then as I tap on one of them, it's here it says copy was selected, right? And if I tap and hold and then share, it says share was selected. 
So we can ensure it's working that way, but we want to enhance this a little bit. So why not give it an image? So something also new in iOS 13 is that there's an image system name. So like, let's say this was, I don't know, arrow dot up. All right, now we run this again. Click and hold. Yep, no arrow up. Oh, I actually spelled it wrong. Great, all right, go ahead and try that again. There it is, so there's my arrow up. And so a lot of these uh, system name and then this string, it's like some sort of, uh, you, you can think of it as like groups of stuff. There's a lot of things that have an up or a down. So this is another one. So there's arrow, uh, there's circles, it's all sorts of stuff. So that's how you can just use what's pre-built into iOS. There's actually an app you can download called SF Symbols. So SF Symbols is a Mac app and it lets you easily understand what the icon would look like and then also what it, the string value is going to be and that's going to be right here below the, the image. Um, so like in this case, if I was looking for anything that had to do with copy, I can just type in copy and here we go, we have two different icons. I could do the one where it's doc.on.doc or dot, dot, on, dot, doc, dot, fill. If I was going to do the arrows up and down, that gets a little bit more general. So there's a lot of different up and down variations. So you can just do up, and it shows you all the different things that are up. So depending on your application, maybe copy doesn't literally mean like copy from here and paste somewhere else, um, but it can mean copy in a different sense. And maybe this is like a copy sharing application. So maybe this would probably be the right thing. or like. Maybe copy means like, you know, going back, you know, whatever is appropriate for your uh, interaction to let the user know that that image matches not only with the word, but just the abstract meaning of your user interface and what the user is trying to accomplish. Um, and as I scroll down, there's a whole bunch of things that have up in them. There's, you know, these chevrons, there's, just, there's the arrow up that I used. So I think I'm going to go back to copy because... I'm trying to make it look like my design that I have here. So I just do doc, dot on, dot doc. All right. So if I go doc, dot on, dot doc, rerun, and I should have this updated. Here it is, updated. Great. So what were the other things that we had in there too? Well, if I go back, um, I actually didn't have a title, so I need to remove that. Let's see what a blank title looks like, or an empty string. Okay, cool, now we're getting somewhere. So now, now besides the, uh, the copy, and now we have a share, what were some of the other ones we had? Share, favorite, all, share in, all photos, and then remove. So let's do the favorite. And let's actually go a little bit more advanced than the other ones. So um, we're going to do the, the uh, larger constructor, more parameters. And I'm going to separate each parameter on each line. And some of these we will not go over, but you can look at the documentation yourself if you'd like to see what they're all about. So here it's going to be favorite, and then the image, UI image, system name, uh, is there a star? I'm just going to guess, see if that comes up. Um, now the identifier, what they recommend to you is actually using your bundle identifier, like the, uh, the com dot name of your app dot your company, um, or your company dot name of your app, I forget the order. Uh, but either way, uh, you have some sort of unique identifier for this action. Um, we're going to forego that. We'll do nil. Um, discoverability title. Let's see. Does that give us anything what that means? An elaborated title that explains the purpose of the action. 
Um, I bet that has something to do with accessibility. Um, I'm not going to put it in here now, but uh, we'll just put in nil for now. Or you could actually just remove these arguments. That's also an option here too. Um, there's also these attributes. So the attributes, uh, you actually can do like disable, destruct destructive, or hidden. So I'm going to say favoriting this blue square is actually disabled. Um, you could also do a state. So you can say mixed, off, and on. Um, so for example, the off state, the on state, and a mixed state, indicating the menu element is in a mixed state. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually going to forget that as well. And then just use the action handler. Again, I see all the information in line, and there's only this one closure, so I'm not going to use uh, that there. Um, oh, I do need a state. I'm going to say it's on. So the action we want here, favorite was selected, All right? Let's go ahead and run that. Let's see how that looks. Oh, forgot to put favorite in here. There we go. So favorite should be a star. I gave it a guess, okay. Star gave it as a check. Uh, that's because the state is on, uh, but let's just say off, click and hold. All right, so notice the disabled state and uh, the state is off. Let's try mixed. Let's see what happens there. Yep, so really no difference there um, other than we have the check now. So I'll say the state is off. And we, you know, depending on when we make this context menu, the state could actually be off. Maybe we're not allowed to favorite at this point in time. So that's why you'd want to use those states to, um, to really like give a visual indicator that something's been done already, and then use the attribute for disabled if that person shouldn't be allowed to do that. So either way, um, I'm just going to make it like so. Go. And now the last one that we actually have that we want to use is uh, remove. Okay, print. Remove was selected. Okay, does that work? Oh, well, we didn't put remove in here. Now here's the thing with remove. Uh, notice it has that red color. So that is known as giving the user feedback for a destructive behavior. So just automatically out of the box, everything has more of this um, plain black text. And there's really no way. I mean, you could see that something is disabled, but you don't really even know that maybe this remove is a little bit more destructive. So if you want to help the user with the safety of that, that's where you add um, some sort of uh, attribute to it. So the attribute comes after image. Let me separate these on multiple lines so you can see how it's organized. So let's do attributes and we'll do dot destructive. Run that again. We'll see the update. So here we are. Remove. Looks like the trash. So that's really all you need to know, um, at least just to get started on context menus. Uh, so thanks for joining me today. If you guys have questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to uh, uh, respond to them in as much knowledge as I know. Um, if you guys liked this, give it a thumbs up and um, we can make more videos about this. Uh, if there's uh, something more that you want me to dive into, please let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.